Good afternoon, I'm Andy Johnson. Welcome to Advertising Week Europe. Now, I'm sure there's been quite a lot of mail delivered to uh, Windsor Castle today for the Queen's 90th birthday. I'm hoping my car got there. But did you realise, because I didn't, just how much of a role direct marketing plays at Royal Mail? A man who can tell us all about that is Jonathan Harmon, who's from Royal Mail Market Reach. It's an increasingly important part of the business, isn't it? That's right, yeah. We're uh, the third largest media owner in the UK by revenue. So we're uh, third after Google and ITV and something over £1 billion a year is spent on mail in the UK at the moment. If you look at 2015 numbers on Nielsen, you'll see that the amount of money spent on mail is actually increasing. So what are you trying to do then? You're trying to obviously keep people to using the traditional mail, snail mail as it's sometimes called now, but also branching out into all the different platforms they can use as well, I guess. So. In essence, what our job is, is to help people get better returns on their investment in mail. Because if mail isn't working for mail users, it isn't going to be working for us. And we do that in a number of ways. The first thing we do is we um, focus a lot on providing marketers with the right insight to get the best returns uh, from their mail. And so we published a number of reports, including the private life of mail, that was a really holistic look at mail behind the letterbox. And most recently, we published um, a new piece of research that demonstrates that people of all ages engage with and respond to mail. What was quite interesting, I was reading up a bit on this, that one of the one of the, the nice lines I thought that came out of it is that if you reached if you happen to reach the age of hundred you wouldn't want to get an email from the Queen, you want to get a letter still. So there's still that that feeling, isn't it, that we want to want to hang on to traditional mail as well as using all the new technology as well. Absolutely. So we're not saying direct mail instead of other channels. We're saying that it works very well with other channels. And if you think about it, we're five hundred years old and mail's always been a one-to-one -one channel and now the rest of the media uh, ecosystem is becoming more and more one-to-one. -one. I think that gives us a new relevance and it gives us a clear and distinct role as a very tangible and personal channel uh, in the media mix. And when you come to an event like this uh, where there's all sorts of new ideas bouncing around and as you say, we see all these platforms that people are actually connecting on nowadays, does it fill you with dread? Does it fill you with absolute can't wait to get out there and see what's happening next? certainly not dread. As I said, I think it's the, the world's almost coming to us. And um, mail is now often barcoded. So bulk mail users will barcode their mail more and more often. And that means mail is effectively digital. So you can understand exactly when the mail was delivered and you can trigger other communications around that. So media sequencing using mail is completely possible. And you can also trigger mail from online behavior when you're using first party data. So I'm getting more and more excited by the future. Do you think people realize uh, how much direct marketing is involved with Royal Mail, or do you think they traditionally still think of going down the post office, buying stamps, etc., etc.? Are they aware of what you're doing and how far you've moved forward in that 500-year period? Um, I think the general public probably do think in a similar way uh, that you described, and I think there is something in all of our childhoods that we remember going to the post office and putting a stamp on mail, but increasingly I think marketers are beginning to reappraise mail and they're looking at it in a new light and that's why I believe that the Nielsen numbers show that in 2015 mail grew. Now we've been talking about the very serious issue of, of, of stress this afternoon and you were involved in this same discussion as well. What, what are you doing as an organisation to try and combat this or help people who may be suffering from stress? Well we're one of the UK's largest employers and so and we rely on our staff to deliver the success that we need and therefore it makes perfect sense for us to take a very practical and proactive um, approach to mental health initiatives. So one of the things we've done is we, you know, we work with the Mental Health Foundation and we work with MIND um, and, and both of our key unions to, uh, on various initiatives. If you look at my own team at MarketReach, um, we, you know, we're, we're a team of marketers and we might be insight professionals, data scientists, um, planners, you know, very similar skill sets you'll find on client or agency side. And, and we try not to make it a taboo subject, so we talk about how we're feeling. So I start my management meetings with how are you all feeling today and make it okay to talk about that and we try and take notice of how the teams are feeling and what's causing them stress and we ask them. Uh, um, you know, and they might say, well, uh, there's a new appraisal system and we're a bit worried about that and how that affects my role or my progress and so that just tells us the bits that we need to communicate more or, or ways that we can manage differently. I suppose the important thing is it's got to be more than just ticking a box thinking oh well we've dealt with that issue now we've, we've, we've done it once that's it put it back in the, in no, the cupboard forget I, about it. I don't think it's like that at all I think it's got to be an ongoing commitment and it's about a belief set I think you've got to believe it's important and act like that I don't think you can just say oh we did a mental health initiative and now everything's fine I just don't think that's the real world at all. Uh, finally good week for you enjoyed the week? 
Yeah, I've been really inspired actually. I thought the, uh, the maker's um, breakfast was my favourite so far. I thought it was brilliant to see those stories of 3,000 um, women and how they've you know, succeeded in various different ways. Some of them were really famous, some of them uh, not at all. And I thought that was brilliant. Lovely. Well, thanks for talking to us. Great to meet thanks, you. Thanks, Andy. Cheers. Have a great rest of the week. And, of course, catch up with all the discussions we've been having here at uh, Advertising Week Europe with the hashtag AWU.